the play begins with uh, Franz is um, conversation with Sidney Janice and his gallery, and Franz has decided he wants to paint with color, and Sidney Janice says no, <laughs> no, don't paint with color, and it's really about who's who decides what an artist paints him, gallery what, his nephew Carl Klein who wrote it and only met Franz Klein once, put this together by speaking to people in Franz Klein's life. And it's about his gallery, the problems with his gallery, and it's about, mainly it's set in the Cedar Tavern where all the artists hung out. And it's a cell, it's, you know, they came there every night, they did crazy things, they had, they were each other's family. They became, um, it's called part of the noise and and they and it's Franz's life and his his story about his wife and then a story about his his later girlfriend and um and they're well uh, Jackson Pollock is in it I mean he's a very small part and um one of my favorite parts of this is there was a poem by that Jack Kerouac wrote and it was done at the Cedar Tavern, I believe. Oh, and they did a movie of it. And it's called Pull My Daisy. And it's this really crazy movie of all the beats playing around and, and having fun. It looks it's a little disjointed. But David Amram did the music for it. And he, I, and so to me, and I, I talked to, I wrote David and we have he, permission to use his music. So during the reading of Pull My Daisy, which is a wild little poem, crazy. Uh, they, we're gonna put his music in. All right, I'm gonna blow your mind. What? <laughs> I am what? gonna blow your oh. mind. <laughs> so first of all, Pull My Daisy was directed by Robert Frank. Who yes, obviously yes, yes. Became very famous and it's got Allen Ginsberg in it. Yes. And, and, and his partner. And the guy who produced it, I bought my house on Mayflower Heights from uh, Walter Gutman. And yeah. Walter Gutman produced Pull My Daisy. Oh my God. That was Alfred Leslie? Yeah. Leslie. Alfred Le yeah, Alfred Leslie, the artist. Yeah. And and so uh, I have wow. a I I have a uh, Walter Gutman used to hang out with all the beats and he yeah. considered himself a uh, bohemian and then his father died he inherited uh stuff and he had to manage money and he became like this um uh he became very wealthy and he had uh, he, he wrote a, a a wall street column called the gutman letters right. and uh at the same time later in life he started making his own movies and he uh, the way uh, well, he made a movie called Circus Girls, and uh, it's because what Gutman got off physically, got sexually off on physically strong women, and he loved being picked up and carried around, even by physically strong women, even though he was <laughs> big oh. guy. And so, <laughs> Circus Girls is about circus strong women, and he had a trapeze in in the, in the house that I well. I should back up. Oh, really? Who's a friend of Howie Schneider's? Did you know Howie Schneider? <laughs> yes, but not much. He, he died shortly, you know. Yeah, yeah that, that was that was the way I met him. And Howie had a cartoon strip at one point called The Circus of P.T. Bimbo. And I think that's how they intersected. And um, so he introduced me to Walter. And at the time, I had a, I had, when I first came to Provincetown, the only thing I did was meditate and paint for six months. And then I started going nuts. So I started, I was a big film aficionado. So I started something I called the Outer Cape Repertory Film Society, which ran in the uh, community center on Bradford Street in Provincetown. And I showed 16 millimeter movies. So my my, my biggest um, sort of aesthetic achievement was doing a double feature of Orson Welles, Macbeth and Kurosawa's Throne of Blood. That was pretty esoteric. But the first thing I showed, I think, was Casablanca or something like that. And it was 16 millimeter reels that I rented. And the first night, I'd never run a projector before. And the drive chain broke. And I stood there all night long, twirling the take-up reel with my finger. And I did it twice for two showings. Um, so at one point, 
Walter Gutman asked me if I would show his film Circus Girls. And I said, sure. And I put it on and he wasn't there. And I started showing it and it's kind of out of focus and it didn't look very edited. And after about a half hour, I apologized to everybody and put on another movie. Fast forward to 1973, this was 1971, 1973. And Walter owned the house. Were you ever in my house on Mayflower Rights? No, no, because I didn't come in until the 82. We, oh, okay. That's right around when we sold it. But it was uh, it was near Bogosian's house. Tom Edward. Tom Edward. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Near Bogosian's house. And uh, Verusian Bogosian's house. And right. uh, the main house on a Methodist retreat colony that was built on this hill between uh, Route 6 and Route 6A. And it had views of the bay on one side and, and the sand, you know, the province lands on the other side. And Walter was asking $75,000 for it. It's a, like a 3,000 square foot house in 1973. And I was on unemployment. I didn't have a pot to piss in. <laughs> yeah. And because I had done this favor for him, he cut the price in half to 37.5. And I still didn't have any money for a down payment. I sent around a, a note to friends and relatives asking them to lend me money for a $7,000 down payment. And I told them if they did, I would refinance in two years and pay them back, which is exactly what happened. So I wound up getting that oh. house. And when I when I first walked into the house, it, it had a two-story atrium for an art studio with a, kind of a kitchen and living room and dining room around it. And that's where I lived with Valerie Falk for a number of years and oh, her yeah, kid. Yeah. And, and it had a um, trapeze in it hanging from a skylight where a woman, a trapeze artist named Susan Susie Perry used to work out. And I have paintings that Walter Gutman did of her in her underwear, uh, you know, practicing on the trapeze. And um, George Siegel, you know, the guy who made uh, sculpture yeah, out yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have images of him making a plaster cast of her body you know, putting the poster on. And and it was so Walter um, uh, published a memoir called The Gutman Le Letters. And it's all about his life. I have the book. It's got all kinds of pictures in the house and everything. And at the end of his life, the, I don't know if it was after he died or before he died, the Whitney Museum held him as a great auteur. And they did a retrospective of his films at the Whitney. Oh, wow. 